Our kids are going to come and, and do our song. Uh, you know, I think it's fitting that, uh, you know, we're going to be starting with a youth service because starting now all the way until next Sunday, it's going to be focused on the, the youth. You know, starting Thursday will be the youth revival all the way to, you know, next Sunday. So, you know. Here we are ushering that in. And, uh, you know, we had such a great move of God this morning. I don't think the Lord's done. You know, uh, I can't wait to see what's going to happen throughout the service. So this is so if you would just uh, praise with us. This is exactly what this song is about. Um, it's it's
they do? Didn't they do so awesome? Yeah. You know, that's what we've been talking about um, in our kids' class is, is praise. And, uh, you know, just like in that song, you know, praise, you know, brought the walls of Jericho down. That's what we, you know, talked about today in our class. And that praise is our weapon. And sometimes I think we forget that because sometimes we feel so defeated, you know, we feel like there's nothing that we can do, but there is. We can praise. Whenever we praise, your walls come down. When we praise, your situation turns around. Whenever we praise, the enemy doesn't even know what to do. Because that's part of the reason why you're going through what you're doing is because he doesn't want you to praise. He doesn't want you to do that. But whenever you do it, that's whenever everything changes. So... Let's just keep that in mind. Let's just keep praising God. Let's just keep praising God, keep ushering him in. And, you know, I can't wait to see what he's going to do. They tell me up there, just keep your minds on the Lord. I, I feel like the Lord is going to do something tonight. Uh, we've been practicing and uh, getting ready for this youth revival coming up. I believe God's going to change some things. Yeah, this yeah. youth revival on, is coming. Uh, me and Brother Ross was talking, and he just about said the same thing I was saying. Well, we've been praying about this thing and uh, seeing where God wants to take us. But tonight... Let's get in. Let's let's have church. Let's see what God can do. Let him, let him finish what he started this morning. Yes. We had a good service this morning, but I believe God's going to come in here and help us this morning. Amen. Yes. Get in here with these youth and listen to them sing and worship with them.
scripture in the Bible. I don't know if you realize that. You know, the crowd is cheering for Jesus and the Pharisees are basically mocking that. And he's like, uh, you know, you wouldn't be doing this if they were, you know, crying out for you. And he said, you know, if I wanted to, I could make the rocks cry out for me. I can make the rocks cry out for me. I don't have to have their praise. I can make I can make anything happen because I'm God. But I want your praise. I 
want your praise. And that's why, that's why praise is a weapon. Because, you know, sometimes praise, just like what the song is saying, it comes at a cost. And I've learned that the hard way. You know, there's sometimes where I see people praising the Lord and I just look and I say, what have they gone through? To why, why they're praising that way? What have they gone through where they can see the love of God the way that they, that they do? Praise comes at a cost. And even though it can be hard, just like what the song said, it said, you know, the longer the wait, the more I'll praise. That is hard. That's hard. You know, that's something that I've recently learned very recently. You know, I've, I had gone through some things probably over the last year and a half, two years. And it's like the Lord just hit me one day and was like, you know, if you would have just been patient, some of the things that you went through, you probably wouldn't have had to go through that. But I didn't realize that. I didn't really, I thought that I was seeking God, but, you know, really I was just going to, sometimes out of my own desires because I just wanted it right then. I didn't want to wait. But sometimes there is a lot to learn in the waiting. Uh, but if our ushers would come and uh, take up our offering, please. We're going to go ahead and uh, pray over it. And I just, you know, continue to just bring in this presence of the Lord because I feel the Lord in this place. Yeah. Let's just go ahead and pray over the offering. God, I just thank you so much for allowing us just to come here tonight, Lord. Thank you for giving us this youth here, for filling this stage, God. Oh, Lord, just thank you for all that you're doing. Thank you for your presence, God. And please, please just use this offering to do your will. In Jesus' name.
give all these kiddos another hand. He started singing that song. He said, oh, let me think of the words. Just say it. He said, oh, oh. He said, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. I'm like, I'm like, what are you doing, son? What is that song? I've never heard that before. He said, just Google it, did he? I said, I said okay, whatever. I googled it up, found the song, and he went right to it. He said, that's it. And he started dancing on the bed. I said, you know, these babies are learning. They're listening to us. They're comprehending what we say and doing and teaching. It ain't going to notice. It's not for nothing. And I, I just appreciate, Lord, what he's doing in these young people's lives, man. We got new ones that started singing, and, man, look like they enjoyed themselves tonight. Just uh, let, letting God use them. And that's what we want. We've been focused on this since January. And I've been uh, talking my heart out back there in the back about stepping up in a, to a new level with God. Don't be complacent where you're at. Don't stay still. I'm tired of being in the old dusty place I've always been for a while. And I want to move up. I want to go up to see Jesus. I, wanna, I want him to use me greater than I ever have before. But we've been talking about that for a while, and I see the Lord moving in yes, and uh, using these young people. Uh, but I just I just want to come to you tonight. I just want to share a burden that's been on my heart. And I pray that this word will, will go forth, and I've just battled with this message. And, Tried to get it nailed down two or three times, and God just wants to change it up on me. And He, he I believe He's got it just right. Amen. I believe He's got it just the way He wants it, not what Brother Kyle wants, but what God wants. Amen. 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 Sometimes we gotta get our little, our little thought out of it, and let Him put His thoughts in it. Amen. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna preach tonight in the Book of Luke. I haven't been to Luke in a while. The book of Luke, chapter 8, is where we'll be starting with. I appreciate this church, though, supporting these young people, supporting us and what we do. I've never seen nothing where y'all didn't have our back and pushed us. And I'm, I'm thankful for that. We have a, a great church that loves to push our young people to be something in God. Amen? Amen. That's what that's what it's going to take. Amen. That's what it's going to take. So we just appreciate the church for uh, doing what y'all have done for us in these young people's lives. Luke chapter 8, verse number 43. This is a very familiar scripture. And you're going to say, this preacher has lost his marbles. Okay? He has gone crazy, and I told the Lord the same thing. I said, they'll think I'm crazy. So let's preach. I, I've been called worse, so let's preach. Verse number 43 says, And a woman having an issue of blood twelve years, which had spent all her living upon phys physicians, neither could be healed of any, came behind him and touched the border of his garment and immediately her issue of blood stanched. And Jesus said, Who touched me? When all denied, Peter 
And they that were with him said, Master, the multitude thronged thee and pressed thee and saying, Thou who touched me? And Jesus said, Somebody hath touched me. For I perceive that the virtue is gone out of me. If you will, stretch your hands this way and pray that the Lord will anoint us in this message and let his will be done. I thought about this just a moment in time that the book of Luke that in the book of Mark I, I was doing a little studying and, and found out that Mark was actually writing the book of Mark and, and, and Luke to a certain extent that Mark was writing to the Gentiles and the people that was not a higher Jew type people. He was trying to write in the day and that time to be able to reach the people that was thought as as dirty. Amen. They was thought as as a nobody. They were thought as as dogs. They didn't even want to go preach to the Gentiles. So Mark was focusing on this and telling them that they are not a nobody. That God loves them. He look, we look at this just a second as Mark was writing all this down. And, and we go to this story of, of this woman with the issue of blood. And, and we look at her just a moment. And I'm not going to stay long here. But as, as we look at her as a, as a woman that having an issue of blood. The Bible says she, it took 12 years of her life she had this problem. She went through things that... Probably family didn't want to touch her. In these days, the law was that anyone with this issue could not touch nobody or be around anybody. Amen? So they, she goes, she's 12 years, and she has nobody helping her. She has nobody to fall on. She has nobody that has her back, not even the priest. She couldn't even go to the church house where God was just to, just to go get prayer that she couldn't go in there because she was looked at as unclean. Come on. Come on. A nobody, a no one. She was looked at as she had a, a terrible disease that would spread. Come on. She was looked at as a, a person that was an outcast. Just as bad as leprosy is what I take from her. So she goes on she, she goes 12 years with this issue. She got to the point where she goes through this and she has insecurities in her life. She has trust issues. She has things that from her childhood up, these 12 years that has been happening, that she has had a problem Trust in people. She don't want to be around nobody, but she takes on an outlook of independence in her life. I want to preach to you tonight about independence to dependent. Independent to dependent. She goes on. She she has a very bad trust issue, and she wants she takes on a a shell of independency so she takes it on and and she says i'll do it on my own then if nobody will help me come on somebody somebody's hearing me tonight somebody's been through this somebody has had to take on a role of independency in your own life and said if nobody else will help me i guess i'll just be on my own and i'll have to do it myself she come through 12 years of being sick independency in her own life. 
Nobody there to help her. Nobody there backing her up. But she gets a shell around her. And it is a... It, independency can be a type of bondage in your life. It can be a thing that, that can get your life and keep it in a shell. And you will never come out and be anything for God. A lot of people say that independency is a good thing for you. You don't have to depend on nobody, right? She goes 12 years with this sickness and she is independent in herself. So she says, the Bible says that she goes and she spends everything she's got. She does every source. She finds every person that she thinks that can help her. She finds them and, and the, the doctors and they ain't no telling where she walked to, where she rode a donkey to, where she went and spent all her money till she had nothing left. But she got to the place where the independency in her life was a bondage. It was holding her back from what she needed. Her insecurities led to independence, independency. She wanted to do everything on her own because she felt like she was nothing in the eyes of everybody. Most of the time, this mindset is in your mind when people really care around you. But the independency is a bondage that holds you and your mindset in a place to where you don't trust nobody to come and help you. She was none better. She went, she found all the physicians, she found all of them that she could, spent all her money, and she was none the better. Some have took we have took, and I believe where God's taken us. I'm fixing to get to the good part. Hold on just a minute. I'm finna tie this in to this morning. I didn't know what Brother Barry was preaching, but I'm finna tie it into it. Some have taken on from things that you've been through in your life from growing up an independent state. And it's not your fault. It's just the circumstances that you've been placed in that has put yourself in bondage when you didn't even know that you was in bondage. I'm trying to slow down just a little bit. I'm, I'm, I'm going 100 miles an hour. I'm trying to slow down and, and really get what God spoke to me. It is a trust issue that was not your fault, but it was placed on you by other ones that was around you, and you can't help. You have an independency problem. You take it on yourself when things come up, when storms is in your life, you, you take it on yourself to try to fix it. I've got to fix it. I've got to try to control this situation before it gets out of hand. This lady did the same thing. She got she got to work. She spent everything she had. She, she took everything out of her closet, all her money, and, and spent it. And our mindset is, I'll fix it. I'll fix it. I can fix this. I can dodge this. I can dodge the call of God on my life. Come on, I'm going to die. I can fix my problem. And I can also, I can walk around my call and I can walk around and dodge it. I'm just that type of independent person because I don't want to have to trust in nobody. I don't want to have to trust in nobody. I don't want to have to go to nobody because I'm so used to being independent. 
I'm so used to doing everything on my own and fixing it myself. But that, let me tell you something tonight, that shackles on your feet. That's a bondage that has been placed on you by other people. That God has said tonight, you better shake it tonight. And you better come out of that bondage and be what I called you to be. Woo, man. I can fix it. But there's nothing better coming out of it. Exodus chapter 33. I'll go right there real quick. This message come out. I went Wednesday morning. Talked to the FCA. Man, God's just burnt that through me. These kids, they just really, man, just got in and, and uh, received this message. But I want to bring this out to them, this message, before we get uh, done here. Exodus 33 and 21 says, And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a rock, and it shall come to pass while my glory passes by, that I will put thee in the cleft of the rock, and I will cover thee with my hand while I pass by, and I will take away mine hand, and thou shalt see my back parts, but my face shall not be seen. I talked to them youth down there at school. And I'm going I'm to tie this into here because I feel the Lord moving in it. Moses, you look at Moses just a minute. God took Moses. And the first thing he told Moses was, he said, I'm going to put you in the cleft of the rock, but first I'm going to put you on the rock. I'm going to put you on the rock. And then I'm going to put you in the cliff, of the cliff of the rock. And I'm going to hide you with my own hand. Look at this picture. He said, I'm going to put my hand, the God that made the universe, the God that holds the span of waters in the palm of his hand, is going to take his hand and he's going to place it over me. But here's the problem. The problem is, God can't put his hand over us because we have our own hand over us. When we put our hand over our problem that God's trying to deal with, self-will kicks in. That is me saying, God, I've got it. The same way with independence. When you are independent and you are trying to fix things on your own, you pretty much saying that you've got your own hand over your life. And that is a, a place to where God cannot come in and He cannot touch that because of self-will and the, and the fact that you saying that I don't need no help. Self-will is a bondage. I'm, I'm preaching here. It is a bondage. It is shackles that you didn't even know about. I didn't know about it till God revealed it to me. But it shackles. It is bondage that will hold you back. She had bondage. She had shackles on. She gets to the place where she feels like nothing. He is nothing. Zero. But if we could get to the place to take our hands out the way and let God cover us. Can I tell you a little promise real quick he told Moses? Just a second and I'll get back on track. He told Moses, he said, I'll put my hand over you in the cleft of that rock. Here's the good part. I told them young people, when God takes his hand away from me, 
When God peels his hand away from me from protecting me and taking care of my problem, he promised Moses, he said, you're going to get to see the glory of what I've done. Yes. Woo, man. If you could just understand that the independency, when you take it and throw it in the garbage, and you depend on God, you move it from independence to dependence. You can move it toward God, and God's going to say, okay, now that I've got it in my control, I'm going to move in it. And when I remove my hand from this problem, you will get to see my glory in it. Woo! Man. Independent. She goes. The woman's tried everything, and everything has failed her. But she gets to the place where she feels like a nothing. She gets to a place, Brother Aaron, where she has nothing. I told them last night at that bonfire, the Lord spoke to me there, and I seen some faces there. I was looking across them kids. The Lord spoke to me, and he said, ask them if they feel like a nothing. If they feel insecure. Even at a church house. Do you feel like you are a zero at church? Most of them raised their hand, didn't they? Most of them raised their hand. I told them, I said, okay, I, I really appreciate y'all being honest with me. But I said, God starts with nothing. The God that spoke the earth into existence out of nothing is the same God that will speak you into existence when there is nothing. It's the same God that will make something out of nothing out of you. Woo, man. Those kids' eyes lit up, and I said, listen, you are not a nothing. I want to tell you something. That's a lie from hell right there. You're telling them kids that they're nothing, and they are everything to God. They are the apple of his eye. There's no need to feel in jeer when you come in a church house. But you ought to feel like a somebody. This woman felt like a zero, a nothing, a nobody. Some of my youth come up here. I'm, I need y'all to help me just say, let's see. Need seven. Seven. Come on. Come on, Lee. Come help me. I'm going to show y'all something to see. Lord showed me. We're going to do a little math. How many likes math? Lee here, he's had math homework. And I don't like math. I hate to. I can read a tape measure, but that's about the end of it. And I can add up a tape measure pretty good. God, you're going to be God tonight, okay? This is God. All right? So you got these that feel like a zero, right? I mean, not, they not feeling like that. I'm just saying. This is a demonstration. I'm not saying they, they zeros. I promise they eat you not a zero, but they <laughs> They feel like zeros. But we have one God. Yes. One God. If you take God and you place Him at the end of the zeros and He is not connected to the zeros, how much money you got? Zero, 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 point one. 
How much money is that? Right? It ain't much. Is that a penny or a dollar? I can't add. I, I want Green County. Penny? Put me in the study. Math. So, so we got, say, one penny. One penny, I guess you'd say, point one. So, we got one penny here. And you got all these zeros. Does it matter where you put God in your life at? Because the last time I looked, I ain't a good mathematician, but the last time I looked, when you put God at the front, come on, you put God at the front, just a minute, and then God touches this zero, this zero touches this zero, this zero, zero, and zero, you got a million dollars. The value of you just went up from zero to a million in just a second because of the touch of God. Man. It matters where you place God in your life. This woman put God on the back burner while she was trying to do everything she could on her own and being independent, but here comes the good part. When she put God first, I'm just telling you, it matters where you put God. When you link God, say they was one to touch God. When this and touches this, what we got? Hundred. When this and touches this, and what you got? Woo, man, we're getting good. All right. What, what you get when you touch this one? Ten thousand. What do you get when you get this one? I don't care how you look at it, but the value of the zeros go up every time. I hadn't seen them go backwards at all. But the woman had Jesus at the end. Oh, y'all good. Y'all good. Y'all did good. Everybody give them a hand clap. Good job. Hope I didn't embarrass them too bad. It matters where you have the one. It matters where you place God. She comes to the place here that she finds out that she has to move God to number one. The Bible says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. Thou art is with me. She found out that thou art. She had to have. She had to have him. She comes to the place. And you can come on, Sister Hannah. I'm fixing to close in just a moment. She comes to the place <coughs> to where he says, Let me get right here. and she came behind him and touched the border of his garment, and immediately her issue of blood stacked. And Jesus said, Who touched me? Let me. Back in Jesus' day, the Jews wore 
or roads that had rope on them. Hanging down. Tassels. Right. Had tassels hanging down. That was a sign of holiness. Was that not right? That was a sign of holiness. I was thinking about the wardrobe that Jesus is wearing here. He was wearing these tassels. He's walking through these folks. Probably many of them. Folks everywhere. What came to my mind was when this woman got to the place where she couldn't help herself, she couldn't do nothing to make it better. She was at the end of her rope. The last string, the last straw. She touched his rope. She touched his rope. I can't quite understand why we wait so long. We go the opposite direction of Christ. When the whole time, his roots right there. We're able, but we got to get to the end of our road first before we, before we just touch him. I don't want to touch him unless I have to. I don't want to bother him unless I have to. But the Bible says, that woman said, when he touched him, when she touched him, he knew immediately that somebody had touched him, the virtue had left him and went into hurt. Mark says it a lot like this. Immediately. Right? He, he's good about that, saying that word immediately. Immediately, Jesus touched him. Immediately, Jesus Immediately. Not five years. She didn't have to wait on the medicine to kick in. She didn't have to wait on nobody to go and take her somewhere to get her seen about by a specialist. But immediately, she was made whole. There's a difference between healing and made whole. A healing is when you have a migraine and God heals it from you. But when she was made whole, everything in her body woo, was made like brand new. God, I don't need just a healing. Woo, I need to be made whole. Gotta wait on God. But I could just see, I don't know. I gotta I don't know. I just got a a wandering mind a little bit. But I wonder if God was standing up on somewhere, just looking at this woman for 12 years. And just looking and saying. I don't understand. I don't know why she is going through what she's going through. Day in, day out, trying to find a cure, brother, and that'd be me. Hunting everybody. Everybody she run into, hey, you know how to cure this?
And she was pressing up through the crowd to Jesus. You know, it was unlawful for you to touch anybody. And if she was caught touching somebody, they'd probably kill her. But there was an insecurity that even if Jesus wasn't who he was, he could have turned her in for touching him. And she would have been killed. But there come a place and a time in her life where the independency had to go. And she said, I don't care what they do to me. I don't care what so-and-so says about me. I don't care what they do about me or my problems or my cause. I'm going to step out and I'm going to move toward Him. Man. I don't care what they say no more. I'm done. I've done been through enough in 12 years. I've done been through way too much. I'm tired of being independent. It ain't done nothing but fail. I can't fix it. But I know whatever I just touched just did. Woo! I feel it. Man, I felt it run through my arm and look through my back. Woo! I was saying in the pond the other day, and Sister Heather, she's pulling that same boy. You're saying it looked like a mule over. She is ripping on that thing and complaining the whole way. I can't, this thing's heavy. She's ripping on She's good though. She's one of the best I've seen. Sign them up. Get them up. So I can preach down there, grab it, and Got my hand wet. I see my wedding ring. I seen it like slow motion. Oh my goodness. I went out there in the pond and I was out there like that. Digging like water at my face. Just, just digging. Trying to hope and bless and touch. I said, Lord, let me find that hand. Where's it at? Digging for that thing in that mud. Never did find it. But you know, that's been two or three weeks ago, three weeks ago. But you know, I felt that ring for so long that you know for three weeks, Every time I turn around, I'm sitting there trying to grab at it because I still feel it. I don't know what that woman felt when it hurt you left him and went into her. But I'm going to tell you what God feels like to me when he touched me. Woo! I can still feel it. If I fall out of church and leave here and go be the biggest sinner that you've ever seen, I will never forget the touch that he touched me. I'll never forget the feeling. I just fall suffering. I like that. So, it's in there somewhere. I'll get it one day. But this woman, that I've had enough. I've had enough with the problems I'm facing because I'm going to turn them over to God. And I've had enough running. Man, I feel this. I'm tired of running from what God has called me to be. But I'm going to be dependent 
on him from now on. Your problem that you're facing, been called to do that you've been running so hard on it. Touch Jesus and see what he'll do with you. I don't know who I'm talking to. I'll tell you, I feel the Lord. Every head by every eye blows. We can be called all the call. Come pray. Come ask the Lord to help us tonight. Come pray. 